students from most of Kentucky and the other states, uh, you know, their losses and their needs last far beyond the media coverage and so forth, and that, you know, we're going to be dealing with this for weeks and months and years to come. So uh, those of us that are more fortunate, I think we ought to uh, give a moment of silence on their behalf this evening as we open this meeting. Like, so I'm going to call on Jessica Philanthropy to speak to us on behalf of the mutual aid agreement. Is that Kai Warren Water and Wastewater is it Key Warren? They call it Kay Warren, which is Kentucky Warren, yeah, okay. which is there's a council that is developed in the state of Kentucky that provides mutual aid for water and wastewater utilities. And this has come up in the past, I think in 2015, they really made a push to try to uh, recruit utilities to, to sign this type of agreement so that in the event of things that just happened a few weeks ago, like the tornadoes, that there is a set list of folks that have already agreed to the terms in this Kentucky Warren Agreement. And it's very clearly defined what your liabilities are. You're under no obligation to provide, assist, to provide assistance, but in the event that you do these things are already in place and you've already kind of got a set of guidelines to follow you know you know how any workman's comp claims would be dealt with you know that there's an opportunity for reimbursement so just if you're loaning folks or equipment you know there's an opportunity that you're not your utility is not necessarily going to be under great hardship but you're providing that with knowing that uh, those utilities that are requesting that uh, assistance that allows them to then file for additional funding through those FEMA programs and those emergency assistance programs. And that's how then those utilities providing assistance could get some additional reimbursement for that. But it allows us as a state uh, to work together and help share those resources uh, in those events and events of emergency. So uh, again, I thought this was something that had already been on file that we had done years ago, but in light of what happened, I realized that the city of Marshtown was not on this list of, uh, for Kentucky Warren. So I thought it was prudent for us to go ahead and do so. We already have an agreement on file for our electric utility to provide mutual aid assistance to other Kentucky utilities um, throughout our state. So I just, again, thought it was good timing to, uh, to enter into this and bring this before the council and see if we could uh, assign, get this assigned and, and provide that assistance. And again, it allows us to ask for it in response to if we ever have the need. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Everybody had a chance to read that. It's, 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 it's extensive, but it's you know, pretty easy reading. It. I think anybody would want to be on both sides of this issue if it ever came to be, if we had a major uh, issue here, we'd want some help and we're certainly <coughs> willing to help um, those that are in need. Because we we have provided aid in the past and we've had been fortunate enough for other cities to respond to our needs at times. So we can formalize it tonight if uh, everybody is in agreement on it. Maybe ask for a moment. Um, Motion to uh, approve the request to participate in the Kentucky War and Water Wastewater Utility Infrastructure Mutual Aid Agreement. So, so moved, Mayor. We have a motion by Councilman Williams and a second by Councilwoman Hart. Is there any other discussion? Okay, seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. And we've got. Um, Eric Richter is going to talk to us about a bid tab for our electric transformers. Sure. So this is actually just a single transformer, uh, even though it is close to the, the, the cost of $46,000. Uh, one of our industrial customers has notified us that they're expanding and going to need an additional transformer uh, next summer. Uh, so it's actually a large 2,500 kVA transformer, and that's actually the cost for a remanufactured one. 
because the lead times were just so uh, large for the new one. So the Cape Electrical is, is a little more expensive, but it was new. Uh, the Sunbelt Solomon one, which is the recommendation, uh, is a little cheaper and it's also a remanufactured one, but in talking to the industrial customer, they are okay with that. Uh, and that gives us a shorter lead time uh, down to just 20 weeks uh, for that one. Uh, so there's just a single transformer. Uh, the next question is, is it been budgeted? Uh, this one wasn't specifically budgeted, but talking with Aaron, we you know looking at some other options. Uh, hopefully, just with our revenue and electric expense, uh, we'll make enough to be able to afford it. Uh, if not, you know, I have my list of budget cuts that we you know whether it's for uh, a proposed project that we we're planning on doing in the spring uh, or maybe even uh, depending on the timing of the uh, new cable shop uh, that we were going to then remodel if that's not done by this budget some of that money could be for this and we can postpone that to the next budget uh, so we'll keep our eye on that throughout the spring uh, if we do have to make some cuts or adjustments to be able to afford this for next summer Eric um what kind of warranty do we get with this? Three years. Three years. And did you say this allows us to have that spare or not? This is, we have one spare on the lot. Uh, that's kind of been our, uh, so the, the goal was to not utilize our spare. Uh, so this allows us to buy this, deploy it, keep our spare. Uh, but then the conversation I had today with that customer was, well, now that we have so many and the lead times are so great, you know, is one spare enough? So that might be a, a topic that we review as a committee and, and with the finance, maybe the next budget, look at making, you know, another purchase. Because we had about $180,000, uh, the last bid tab that we did, um, and this one is another forty. dollars So uh, that kind of is a little over budget from what we had planned, but, you know, plan on making some cuts in those projects. But we may look at needing to buy more spares just because the lead times are, I mean, 40 to 45 week lead time is just almost. Right. Yeah, so you won't, you won't use your spare. You'll wait till this one comes in and use this for the yes. substantial project. Yes. Okay. How does a warranty work on a spare? Um, I believe it's more it's from purchase date, not from install date. Uh, so, you know, whenever we purchase it or maybe date of arrival, mm -hmm. maybe I'll check on those specifics. Um, but you know, this would be deployed within just a few weeks of arriving. Uh, so I would assume that you know, it'll be the first three years of its life, it will be being used I'm for anything. Would it make more sense to put the spare, since it's already, we've already seen part of its warranty, put the spare in and then use the new one as the spare? Does that make sense? Yes, uh, we, we could do either option. And we've, okay. we've talked, communicate that with the factory on, on either option. Um, but this just allows us to have deploy one and keep one in stock, uh, whichever one we deploy. Yeah, how do you think it would start to us install? I don't know how they would, how, how they would hit you on a warranty for it being on the shelf. You know. uh, right. One thing, Eric, on this, do we do the engineering based on the to decide what size we're providing a company, or are they doing the engineering? They did, so they said, well, it's they have a 4,000 amp switch gear mm -hmm. uh, that they need service for, which just equates to, you know, a 2,500 kVA. So they, they said that's kind of just become their standard, as they just spec we need a 4,000 amp switch gear, uh, which, which we then spec a 2,500 kVA transformer, even though that's probably a, lot a little lot larger than what they will utilize. Uh, but that's just what they requested as far as their spec. Yeah, I guess that my question and the direction I'm going is if, if, if we're doing this just because we need that size spare on the lot or are we doing it because it's the type that they requested and if it's not, if it's too large and we suffer some line losses there, right, it end up, so we could probably provide them a smaller transformer if we had something on the lot, I guess is where I'm going with that. So are we, are we providing this size transformer for them just solely because they asked for it or is it like a load data sheet that they gave us and they said, we need this much load? In the past it was based on a load data sheet, but most of that has always just been because they said, hey, we're installing a, a 4,000 amp switch gear, so we need you to, to match it. But that's a conversation that we've had is going through and looking at 
uh, for this one customer, they have seven transformers looking at their loading on each one to see is 2,500, probably is for in almost every case too large, but it just coordinates with the sizing that they have for their capacity on the Swiss gear. But usage wise, it probably is, is more than what they are using. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, any other questions of Eric on this uh, bid tab? If not, I'd entertain a motion to uh, purchase the uh, transformer from Sunbelt Solomon Solutions for 45975 the recommendation of electrical engineer. So moved, man. Motion by Councilman Jones. Is there a second? Second, man. Second by Councilman Hibbs. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried. Thank you. There'll be a test about all that discussion after this. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to be compared to this one. The home has gotten even it's more fun things to talk about. So in the home, we got a bid tab for cable and internet. And <coughs> Cable and internet rates uh, for next year. Okay, so um, so we have we did an RFP for a passive optical network, which basically just means uh, a terminating black box for all the fibers we run into the head end. Um, we currently have a device that's about five years old and has a couple of limitations. One is it can only serve about a gig um, to a customer. So that's, um, most services are becoming a gig. And so looking into the future and all this optical network we're building, we need a new device that can do more than that. Multi-gig is the next level of service that we would like to offer. So we put together uh, an RFP and requested a, um, a few of the companies that are in the business in that uh, space of uh, passive, passive optical network, and we determine the number of nodes we want to start with, which is about 48 areas, 48 nodes we call it, um, and below is what we've got, we got returned for us. Um, Nokia uh, is, is about 188, 54, 554 um, in capital. Uh, Adtrend is 18 cents. Harmonic 762,268.66 and Calyx is 203,262.02. So this is a budgeted item for us. We, we knew this is kind of where we're heading uh, as we deploy more fiber optics around town. Um, uh, but we needed the brain in the head end to be able to manage all those optical connections and, and provide the service. Um, we're recommending Harmonic. It's got the, um, in terms of investment, the, the, the lowest bid. It also interfaces with our existing platform. Um, we, as you know, we have a cable modem platform. There's also the brain piece of that in the head end that allows us to convert IP uh, from coax. And that also has some age to it. And this allows us to integrate those two platforms into one. And, and, and kind of, if you will, a hybrid approach to transitioning to the next platform for the internet. So, um, with that, if you all have any questions. I hope that you say that also, if you all remember, we've, we're converting uh, a lot of that space in the former fire department into probably almost doubling the size of our head end that we currently have. So this equipment is part of the reason we need that is also for that reason that we're expanding uh, the head end. That's right. So the new head end uh, is almost complete. We've got a lot of the components done. Uh, this will go in in one of the rack spaces. Uh, we've already pulled um, enough fiber to serve 24,000 customers. And that would terminate basically in this device. Um, so this is kind of the, the the last piece for that fiber run that goes into everybody's homes. Now, how much uh, multi gig business is there out there? I mean, we can't service that right now, since you're saying we can do a gig per customer. So is there enough multi gig business out there that uh, we're going to bring in by doing this? 
Uh, we've, we, we are at the start of that. Uh, residential is majority of services are gig, but uh, multi-gig allows you to serve a gig service properly. So even though you have a gear of, a, of, a, of a one gig, uh, there's, uh, you, your capacity is not fully a gig because of overhead and, and error corrections and things like that. So having a, a, a backend that can support 10 gig allows you to not just serve one gig properly, but you can also do 2.5 and 5 and, and so forth. Okay. Um, the other thing this, this platform also has is there's the next generation after 10 gig, which is 50 gig. And so it has the support and the roadmap built into supporting that platform as well. So that's one of the other like, key units we use with that. So for us, not uh, know what a gig is and all that stuff, what does that mean to the customer? How, how would they benefit from this? Um, so in, in my simple life. Right. So, <laughs> so this, this um, <coughs> So a, a gig of traffic, um, basically, um, if you will, um, is kind of the top line in terms of speed for the most part. Uh, this takes it to the next level of 10 times that potentially. And so as more application gets complicated and has more interactive, uh, data-driven, heavy load, and both symmetric, meaning um, you know, Zoom and things like that that require traffic on both directions. So you need a symmetric platform that can not only provide the data to the customer, but also be able to upload the data from the customer app up to the cloud or to the other side of the world. So, so the, this, this kind of gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, it removes this, the, the limitation of most of, our plat, uh, most of our system, which is one directional. This allows us to be bi-directional at the same speed. So quite a bit. Does it still keep us competitive with our competition as far as that's correct. Service? That's correct. Our competition doesn't have multi-gig offerings at the moment. They do have one gig currently. You also see to you continue, Joe, to see a shift from that cable services to streaming services. So this that's another prong of that too. That's right. Now hold on, uh, Harmonicus bid. Let's see, they give us a credit for the training and installation. That's right. They put that in as a discount for us. Um, they, um, in talking, in talking to them, you know, I was trying to understand. They said, you know, we, we know what you're heading. Where where you're trying to go with this, and you know, we want to be there and supporting both platforms and, and being a, a transition on not only the coax side but on the uh, on the fiber side as well, so that was kind of, they threw that in for us. And plus with their, their maintenance contract even added up is cheaper than the next bid, right? Right, so. Even if you total them both, yeah. Can we pick and choose maintenance contracts? <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess not. Well, yeah, we, we can't exactly, but the one thing, the, it was not exactly apple to apple, uh, for the from the cheapest ones that you're, you're looking at, some of them are just phone support and not you know where you can call them and they send you a replacement for the parts and pieces. And so um, I was not too happy with the responses because that's what I was, that's what we need. If something happens to the equipment, we need you know. And this is the better of the maintenance contracts. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Home on this. Bit then? Well, if not, I'll ask for a motion then to uh, approve harmonic for the uh, 162, 268, 66. I'm trying to think of the right way of word, but you just <laughs> asked us to buy in this motion. Is it a symmetric 10 gig pond? Is a there you go. Yeah. I see that here now. I'm reading it. Symmetric 10 gig palm solution pre packaged head in lot service. <coughs> so, for the recommendation of the whole year, 162, 268, 66. I'll make the motion. Right. 
Right, motion for Councilman Hayes. Second. Second by Councilman Doe's. Any other discussion? All in favor of that, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right, thank you. Okay, we've got um, some COAs. Go back up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Did you want me to discuss the TV yes, part? Yes, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, as, as usual, a uh, wholesale uh, cable TV cost has, has gone up. Um, this is kind of a yearly increase. Um, our basic service is a wholesale, our wholesale cost that we just pass on to the customer. Uh, it's gone up by $5.16 on um, uh, basic and expanded and uh, economic economy basic and extended sorry it echo basic and extended basic is four dollars and fifty nine cents uh, this is kind of um, you know we, we are a wholesaler pretty much for the content that we get from the providers like ESPN NBC and so forth and and as as uh, as their rates go up and they have a, a lot of them have their built-in annual cost uh, we have to pass that <coughs> to the customer. There's nothing for us, and our ordinance allows us to um, pass on these costs and inform the customers. But I wanted to be, you know, share that with y'all. Uh, as uh, it's the same thing that happens every year. We rarely see it going down, but um, uh, that's the five dollars and sixteen cents is what it looks like for most people, majority of the customers. The basis going up two dollars and seventy-two cents, and the standards going up two dollars forty-four cents. But y'all remember that we negotiate three-year contracts with the major networks every three years. So those are always a tiered uh, contract. So it goes up the first year, it goes up the second year, it goes up the third year. Uh, ESPN is just the giant, and they go up every year. They don't, you know, they don't negotiate; they just and for the most part, we're still pretty competitive because we sell everything at wholesale cost. We're still competitive to Dish Network and uh, and other uh, providers around around Uh yeah. We're we're providing a service at the bottom <coughs> rock, you know, rock bottom prices. I think the home just said that you're prepared to <coughs> slash charter. You know, we're under their rates for the same type of services, you know, the adjoining areas like Elizabethtown, Louisville, Madden, Springfield, places like that, the same services still comes in monthly at a lesser rate than what they're paying for comparable services, especially with Charter and uh, some of the rural areas. So, so I mean, we wanted to share that with y'all because that's going to have that, that notice will go out and start February 1st, right? Correct. Correct. So, um, it doesn't need to require council to approve what's built into the ordinance. The wholesale rate gets it passed on. All right, thank you. Any other questions in the home on this? Thank you, Coach. I was moving on to see the ways. Um, <coughs> we only have a few of those. I know we have one recusal. Uh, Councilman Buckman will go ahead and ask our city attorney to read the summary of recommendations and then take them up. COA 21221MD Construction LLC applicant owner requests to install a side porch at 114 East John Fitch Avenue. Recommendation approval to install the side porch with the following conditions. Conditions. The columns and balusters will be wood and the columns will match the front of the house. COA 21219 Carolyn Naftali, applicant owner, requests to install a storage building at 110 South 5th Street. Recommendation approval to install the storage building with the following conditions. Conditions. The paint colors for the storage building will be staff approved. COA 21220 Carolyn Naftali, applicant owner, requests to install a concrete patio at 110 South 5th Street. Recommendation approval to install the patio with the following conditions. Conditions. The final design of the patio will be staff approved. COA 
See what 21122 amended Sam Lacey and Nika Mathis applicant reclamation exchanges LLC owners request to amend the paint color for the trim to intellectual gray at 111 South 3rd Street. Recommendation approval for the proposed paint color. COA 21204 amended JTD Holdings LLC <coughs> on a request to replace the metal frame of the awning at 102 North 3rd Street. Recommendation approval to replace the proposed metal frame of the awning. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Um, I know Joe needs to recuse, so um, he wants to decide. We'll take COA 21-204 first. for a motion to approve COA 21-204. Um, Hi, Mayor, I'll make that motion to uh, approve COA 21-204 amended, uh, including recommendations uh, by the uh, HRP. All right, thank you. We have a motion, is there a second? Second, Mayor. Second, Council Moving Hart. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. <coughs> All right, so it looks like we have COA 21 219, 220, 221, and 122 to take up paragraph A through D as per recommendation of the Historical Review Board with conditions. So moved, Mayor. Motion to Councilman Williams. Is there a second? Second. Second to Councilman Hibbs. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, then all in favor of sitting around and saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right, Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, everybody had a chance to look at our minutes for the December 14th meeting. <coughs> if there's no uh, Changes or additions will approve them by unanimous consent. And then we'll move on then to our second readings. Um, I'll ask our city attorney the second reading from Ordinance B 2021 14, Chapter 98, related to sign regulations. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number B 2021 14, Chapter 98, sign regulations. An ordinance amending and adopting as amended Chapter number 98 of the city of barstown's code of ordinances for sign regulations the city council of the city of barstown kentucky is hereby ordained that chapter 98 sign regulation section 9808 signs not requiring permits subsection k be amended as follows k incidental signs that are informational have a purpose secondary to the use of the lot on which they are located such as no parking entrance, loading only, telephone, and other similar directives, provided that the signs contain no commercial message or logo. Strike incidental signs shall have an area of no more than four square feet. Add building signs that are incidental slash directional signage shall be included in the allowed building sign percentage. Freestanding incidental slash directional signage shall have an area of no more than four square feet. All ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. This <coughs> ordinance shall be in full force and effect immediately upon its passage, approval, and publication as required by law. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Um, this is second reading, so I will need a motion then to approve uh, B 2021 14, Chapter 98 on sign regulations on the second reading. So moved. Motion by Councilman Dones. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Buckman. Any other discussion? This is the individual vote, so everyone signify with aye if they approve, starting with Councilman Hibbs. Aye. 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 Motion is approved. Thank you. All right, the second, second, second reading this evening is B 2021 16, which is a supplement to our code of ordinances that uh, Gary covered for us last meeting, but we'll let you go ahead and read it. All right. Ordinance number B, 2021-16, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Barstown, Kentucky, whereas American Legal Publishing Corporation of Cincinnati, Ohio, has completed the 2021 S-23 supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Barstown, Kentucky, and it contains all ordinances of a general nature enacted since the prior supplement to the Code of Ordinances of this municipality. And whereas American Legal Publishing Corporation has recommended the revision or addition of certain sections of the Code of Ordinances which are based on or make references to sections of the Kentucky Revised Statutes. 
and whereas it is the intent of the council to accept these updated sections in accordance with the changes of the law of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city of Bardstown, section one, that the 2021 S23 supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Bardstown, Kentucky, as submitted by American Legal Publishing Corporation of Cincinnati, Ohio, and as attached here to be adopted by reference as if set out in its entirety. Section 2, that this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after its date of passage, approval, and publication as required by the law. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Uh, this is a second reading. I would need a motion then to approve B2021-16 B on the supplement to our code of ordinance on a second reading. I'll make a motion here. Uh, motion by Councilman Hinn and a second by Councilman Buckman. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, then all in favor, signify by saying aye. We'll call it individually, starting with Councilman Dones. Aye. 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 Right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, any staff reports or committee reports this evening? Okay. Do you have any cemetery deeds? Um, Councilman Sheckles did tell me to announce he was out of town visiting his daughter, I think, so we couldn't make it tonight. So wish everybody a happy new year and so to see you next year. So, um, anything else from the council members need to bring before the council this evening? I just have a quick comment. Uh, right before Christmas, probably five or six days, I guess, there were a lot of uh, the bags sold at Save a Lot for our blessing boxes, a very large amount. And I just wanted to say thanks to all the people that purchased those, but special thanks to my fellow councilmen who, within a very short notice, picked them up and got them all distributed to the boxes so that people could uh, take advantage of those before the holiday. Thank you, Maddie. All right. Um, as far as mayor's update, I would say that we had an excellent turnout for Larry Hamilton's uh, dedication to the Public Works Building last Thursday, so thank everybody who made it. And, Really well attended by former council members and lots of former employees and co-workers of Larry and a lot of people from the community. So it was a great way to honor him. So thank you all for that. Um, I just would like to finish up uh, the year by saying, you know, we remembered all our neighbors in the West for how unfortunate you know their year has ended, but we've got a lot to be grateful for here in Barstown and Nelson County for the year that we've had. And, you know, it's, uh, I just want to thank the, the staff and the council. You know, we, we dealt with a full year of the pandemic, whereas last year it was sort of a partial year. I think the jury's still out whether people think it was the worst year this year, having the whole year to deal with it, or last year when uh, it's just hard to say. But, you know, our work goes on, you know, day in and day out. That's what they've hired us to do and provide those services and I think you all have done a great job and I, you know, um, the community really didn't seem to slow down much in 2020 nor in 2021 in terms of everything we did, handling all the growth and <coughs> all the services with the fire and police and all the internet cable and everything, all 12 departments, you know, we, our work goes on every day and we had that brief period in 2020 where the city kind of shut down, but once it opened, it really went wide open. So uh, I just want to thank you all for a great, great job that you all did. And thank the media for hanging in with Zoom meetings and in-person meetings and not in person meetings and back to Zoom meetings and now we're back to in-person and who knows what's going to happen uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, I, I did, I am seeing that Kentucky, the, the numbers aren't near as bad as they are in other states, but that could just be a matter of time, you know, as far as on the percentage basis. It's Greg, you just, uh, I haven't had anybody call me about testing positive um, in the last several weeks, and then I had three today. Uh -huh. City employees, you're talking about, right? City employees or people that they live with. So I, I expect to be some kind of spike. So anyhow, you know, I just wanted to take time to thank you guys for navigating another year of something we've never experienced in our lives and hopefully we never will again, but I think we're going to be living with it for a while, even into our 2022, but I think we got some 
good people in place and good policy in place to, to deal with it. So just everybody be safe and, and behave yourself. And, <laughs> and uh, if you're not, you, you pay the consequences, I guess. So. See you in the jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't, we don't see all the hospitalizations and all that, but the positivity rate's pretty, still pretty high in uh, everywhere in Kentucky right now. So Anyway, thank you all. So, thank you, Mayor. Nothing else. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion for Council Williams, second for Council well, Buckman. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all uh, folks. You lose. Motion carried. <laughs> Well, I miss about 20 seconds. Probably about, I mean, no, just, it's, 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 it's,